Hello and welcome back to another episode of And Injustice for All MMA. My name is David, and this episode is for UFC 303 Pereira versus Prohaska. Um, as you know, this is ions late, super late, but we'll just get into it. First fight of the night, Simone versus Oliveira. Um, I had this 30-27 for Oliveira. Um, in the first round, Oliveira outstruck Simone by about 11 strikes. In the second round, he outstruck Simone by 15 strikes. Simone had a takedown, but he did nothing with the takedown. Oliveira got up pretty quickly. And then in the third round, um, Oliveira had a takedown, and he outstruck uh, Simone by 15-plus strikes. The takedown came close to the end of the round. Um, you go to the judges' scorecards, and two of them seem to agree with me. So Eric Colon and Tony Weeks have it 30-27. Uh... And then Junichiro Kamijo, for some weird reason, decides, let me give the second round to Ricky Simone. Honorable mention there to Junichiro Kamijo. That's a that's a terrible round to score. We go to the next honorable mention. We go to the next honorable mention. And this is the fight that uh, commentary just killed the entire night. All right. Um, I've been saying it for a long time. Arlovsky is done. When Arlovsky fights, he's on autopilot isn't the right word he's trying to survive or he's just trying to buy time and in this fight he was trying to buy time like no other i was very disappointed that this was a split decision no scorecard on god's green earth should show a split decision that just shows how bad this was scored um i had this uh 30 27 for budai you can't find a round for arlovsky you go to the first round where Budai outstruck Arlovsky, mostly in the clinch. He's the only active one in the clinch. Go to every single clinch position in this fight. The only overtly active person, and that's not to say Arlovsky didn't land anything in the clinch. Overtly active person in the clinch is Budai. On the feet, there were moments for Arlovsky, but relatively speaking, he's still getting outstruck on the feet throughout the entire um, fight. Um, second round, Arlovsky, uh, excuse me, Budai outstrikes Arlovsky. Again, mostly in the clinch again. You go to the third round where, again, Budai outstrikes Arlovsky mostly in the clinch. This time by 15 plus strikes. In this round, he's supremely active. There, there were moments where the commentary was like, oh, there we go, Arlovsky. Kind of like, you know, wishing him to be a little more active. And when he was slightly more active, Budai would hit him with something a little heavier and he would go into clinch mode. But it's not as though he would go into clinch mode and strike he would go into clinch mode and just hold um if you've seen a lot of arlovsky's recent fights this is our this is arlovsky he doesn't just point back to when he fought aspinall and he tapped in the most get me out of here tap i've ever seen in my life to the point where when i see people one tap i just hate it and it's all because of andre arlovsky that's beyond the point 30 27 on my scorecard commentary was just wishing they were praying for i mean there were times where it almost felt like they were rooting for Arlovsky. And and some of the worst parts of this fight were them downplaying Budai. Th- they were crapping on Budai to be a little more active, um, to take more chances. But the onus isn't on him. He's out striking Arlovsky in a very fine and understanding way. But yet they wanted him to push and go and, and be more forward. That was so unnecessary. It, it felt, it felt stupid. We go to the judges' scorecards, and it, it's ridiculous. Mike Bell, he has it, um, twenty nine twenty eight. He gives the first two rounds to Budai. Gives the last round to Arlovsky. I don't know where the fuck you find where where, because he's holding for for the for the majority of the round. Honorable mention. That's ridiculous. Derek Cleary, he gives the first round to Arlovsky. No. Gives the last round to Arlovsky. No. Honorable mention there to Derek Cleary. It's a stupid scorecard. You go to the next one, and Saul Diamond is the only correct scorecard. 30-27 to Budai all the way. Just ridiculous. To It wasn't even... It was Yeah, it was a bad watch, but ridiculous that these scorecards came up. Go to the next honorable mention. It's uh, Watterson Gomez, but I'll refer to her as Gomez, uh, versus Ro- uh, Robertson. 30-27. 30-27. Um... They, during this fight, it was annoying because the the stupid Twitter sc- cards keep coming up where the media go, oh, this happened and this happened. 10 eights? They were giving out 10 eights as though Robertson was smashing her head in. 
yeah, she had ground and pound. Yeah, she held it on there for a long amount of time. It wasn't enough for... A lot of these weren't enough for a 10-8. I think the only round you can argue a 10-8 is round two. Round three, no. Round one, definitely not. And if you wanted to give an extra 10-8, round three would be the one to give. But one 10-8 at the max. Okay, and I'm glad the judges did it that way. Um, online scorecards were, were going... 2016 after two after two rounds, ridiculous. First round, Robertson had to take down with ground about for two plus minutes. Second round, Robertson had a takedown with ground about for four plus minutes. This is where you can argue the 10-8 if you want to. Um, and then round three, uh, Gomez had a takedown. Quickly got out of that. Robertson didn't. Robertson had a takedown with ground and pound for three plus minutes. So there you have it. You go to the scorecards. Saul Diamata, he has his score. His, his scorecard reflects mine, thirty twenty-seven. Chris Lee, his scorecard reflects mine, thirty twenty-seven. And Ron McCarthy, he gives the second round a ten-eight. Um, his scorecard is thirty twenty-six. So there you go. You go to the next honorable mention, and this one isn't even honorable mention. It's a straight robbery. All right. The commentary wants to go. It's close. It's close. But no, I don't think this was close in any capacity. You had um, Swanson versus Feely. This fight ended in a split decision. It shouldn't have. It really shouldn't have. You go to the... Uh, I had this 29-28 for Swanson. First round and the last round for Swanson. First round, Swanson outstruck Feely by about three strikes, okay? He was outstriking him well enough to win this round. It was enough strikes to win this round. There was also a, a part towards the end where he kind of slips. Feely did not drop him. In no way is this a drop for Andre Feely. Swanson just slipped, so I just want to point that out for anyone who's like, oh, well, he dropped him. No, not at all. Go to the second round. It's close on strikes. Feely has a takedown. It's very close on strikes. They're close to even on strikes. Feely had the takedown, and that's what is the difference in this round. And then you go to the third round. Feely had a takedown, but that didn't matter. Swanson gets up relatively quickly, and he outstrikes Feely by about seven strikes. You go to the judge's scorecards, and... um they yield something a lot different. So, Mike Bell, honorable mention, he gives the first round to Feely. No, he gives the last round to Feely. He gives the second round to Swanson. This scorecard is inverted. Honorable mention to Mike Bell, this is a terrible scorecard. You go to um, Ron McCarthy, same thing. His scorecard reflects Mike Bell. No, honorable mention. Adelaide Bird, who a lot of people don't like, has the correct scorecard. Again, she scores it weird. He gives, she gives the first round to Feely. Second round to Swanson, and last round to Swanson. Ridic- I'm, I'm just not. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling this result at all. So Swanson should have won. He didn't. We move on. No one. No one will probably care. Um, you go to the next honorable mention. And um, again, I'm scoring this pretty late, so I, I've dodged some spoilers. I've dodged. A lot of other spoilers, and then some spoilers you couldn't dodge. And one of them was uh, Gary and... Uh, well, actually, I, I actually did dodge this one. I dodged this one, but a lot of the headlines... Not headlines, what, what do I... How do I say this? Um, a lot of the posts I've seen inferred that this fight should have been a draw. No, n- not at all. But beyond that point, we go to the next honorable mention. And it's Gary versus... Um, uh, Gary versus Page. I had this 29-28 for Gary. Um, first round and the last round for Gary. I'll explain the last round in a second. Um, in the first round, Gary had a takedown with some ground and pound and a submission attempt for about two plus minutes. Second round, uh, Page just outstruck Gary by about 16 plus strikes. And then the third round where the commentary seemed to not know how to score for for, for a whole round. They were just like, oh, I would lean this way and I would lean this way. All of their reasonings made zero sense. It came down to this. Third round. Page had a takedown. Gary was super active when, when he took him down. Let's let's pause for a second. Michael Venom Page took him down and proceeded to land little to no ground and pound. Gary was active. For however long they were down there in that initial takedown, Gary was very active. They get up. The strikes that were landed on the feet were very few. And and DC at times, would, or not even DC, I think it was, someone in commentary made it seem like um, Venom Page was landed this 
crazy amount of enough strikes to where we can make this a conversation. No, they were both fairly even on strikes on the on they're fairly even on the feet in this third round. So you go to so you go to the part where Gary now gets a takedown. Okay, Gary gets a takedown and lands some ground and pound to close out the round. He has Michael Venom Page's back. Page lands some strikes, but it's not enough. And as a result of him being active on the bottom, Gary, and Gary being active when he was on top of Michael Venom Page, he wins this round. It's pretty simple. We've seen rounds like this. But for some reason, when it's a pay-per-view, everyone, the philosophy has to change. Like, oh, well, does the control matter? Does eh, Throw that bullshit out the window. So there's that. You go to the the judges' scorecards, and all three of them have it the same way. Um, Derek Cleary, Saul Diamando, and, and, and Chris Lee all have the exact same scorecard. So there's that. You go to the next honorable mention. Go to the next honorable mention, and that's Smith versus Delize. And this 29-28 Delize for... Uh, First two rounds are for the leads, a simple. Last round is a close, close round. I think you can argue the round for either person, but I had it 10-9 for Smith. I had him up by, like, a strike, really. Um, you, again, this could be a 30-27 for the leads, if you want, but I had this 29-28 for Smith. Um, you go to the first round. Go to the first round if I can find it. Uh, the leads, they outstruck um, Smith by about seven strikes. Um, Delize had ground and pound for two minutes, and he outstruck uh, Smith on the feet. And then the third round is close on strikes with the edge to Smith, to which he outstruck uh, Delize by a strike. Um, you go to the next honorable mention, if I can find it. The next honorable mention, and that's it. There are no more honorable mentions. I mean, other than that, it was a pretty okay um, pay-per-view. Who knows what it would look like if it were Olberg versus, um, if it were Olberg versus Hill, if it were Hill versus Roundtree, if it were Olberg versus Smith. Who knows what it would have looked like? Um, who knows what it would have looked like if it was Lopez versus uh, um, Ortega? Instead, we just got, you know, Lopez versus Ige, which turned out to be an okay fight. But I think more love should have been given to Lopez. A lot of love was given to Ige in the fight, mainly because of the third round and just him taking the fight on on short no, on super short notice. Not to say he shouldn't have gotten praise. He should have. But Lopez is the is the person who should get the most praise for making weight, then saying, okay, I'll let my opponent fight at 155. Then, not only that, fight gets canceled. Then, then Ige comes off the street to fight a 165. So, I mean, it, it, with no weight cut, by the way. So, it, it, we're looking at a scenario where Lopez went through 40 different emotions and everyone in the world's just showering Ige with praise. Again, this isn't to bash Ige. It's just to say that Lopez should have gotten a lot more love here. Um, and then Bueno Silva versus Chesson. Bueno Silva was winning the first round. Second round comes in. She's kind of losing. I, can't, I don't remember that far. And all I just remember... Well, yeah, she's losing uh, the second round. And uh, Chesson lands... I'm trying, to rem- I'm trying to remember here. I'm trying to think. Yeah, Chesson lands a, a, a nasty cut to which... I think DC said it perfectly... Tyone stops these type of fights. Not even, not only that, he was so indecisive on when the re- on when the doctor came to him and had to like basically goad him into stopping the fight. I think any other ref would have been like, "All right, thanks, thanks for the recommendation," and they would have probably let it fight on a little a little more. But it is what it is what it is there. And then the main event, my guy Yuri Prohaska, he loses. And we just have to we just have to move on. He loses on the second round by TKO. Um, DC does a Dan Hardy and a Anik. Stop the fight. That that's annoying. If you watch the if you watch the the ending to the pay per view, DC obviously was like, "All right, I was I was being a bit dramatic." Um, there was no need for the stop the fight. I mean, he was moving up until the very end, and that's what happens. Prayer wins by TKO. Um, that's it. Thank you all for listening. And I'll be back hopefully soon with the the next fight card. Thank you all for listening and God bless.